Hello guys, so it's time for a new series. Um, this is going to be in my new big build, a new cosplay build for this year. And it's going to be Deathwing from World of Warcraft, but it's going to be in this design here, which was designed by Zach Fisher. I'll have his stuff linked below. He's an amazing artist and tends to do these like redesigns of different game characters, usually Blizzard characters, but not always. So, um, this is going to be a multi-part series, just like Ashmane was, but I'm going to keep the series shorter. Ashmane had 50 25 videos, sorry. Um, this series will be around 10 videos, I think, all together. Um, in this video right here, we're starting with the gauntlet. So from my fingers to my elbows, this, this video is going to cover. Um, the building part, not the painting. Painting will be in my video later on. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to show you how I made this, sort of a similar style to I did fashioning. And I'm also playing LEDs everywhere in this thing. I want it to glow. I want it to look like lava. <laughs> so yeah, that will be fun. Anyway, on to the making. So I am using EVA foam as I usually do. Um, this here, I was making a pattern of a like tr test piece first. I'm using 5mm foam here. Um, for my base for these gauntlets, I, I am using a pattern from Kamui Cosplay, which I'll link below. I did change it up a little bit to fit um, Deathwing's gauntlet style a little better. And that's when I made it out of uh, that test piece over there and then I cut it up a little more to fit better and then made my own pattern from there. And here I traced it, traced it onto 5mm foam like I normally do and cut it out things after night. And I will be using contact cement as usual to connect these. I do use weld wood. Sometimes you want to use two coats of that instead of just one and I personally Wait about 12 minutes um, after I apply the glue before sticking it together. Personally, with where I'm located in our community and stuff, that's just what works better. Um, basically, you just want to wait till it's dry, though. So when if you can touch it and it's not tacky anymore, it's ready to go. And here I'm sticking the pieces together. Like I said, this is just the base. Um, I'm making sure I climb these up with these little hash marks. I believe that's what they're called. Um, that were on Kamui's cosplay. Um, pattern for the bracer and then I think I added a couple here and there or at least to some other things. So it's a little awkward to stick together but that helps it get that nice curved shape. So it, it makes it look cool when it's done. Um, but this is just the base that no one's going to see. I'm going to stick LEDs onto this and then I'm going to add plastizote I believe it's called so like a transparent foam finish that you can go through it. You'll see here in a bit. I do just carefully line these up, usually starting from a corner um, to a little hash mark, stick those together, then line up to another hash mark. And as you can see, whenever you're first sticking these together, you can pull them apart um, immediately, but once it sets for a while, you won't be able to pull these apart anymore. If you really mess up, you can always cut these back apart. I've done that with some things before. Um, it might make your seams a little messy though, so try not to get it wrong. Um, but you can always just quick seal the hide seams if you need to, and either way, on this, no one's going to see these seams, it's all going to get covered up. But if you're skipping LEDs and not doing that like what I'm doing, um, this space right here you can build right off on top of for all those details. You don't have to do all the plastic zoom and LEDs. I just wanted to be extra, and I want to be a giant glowing character walking around the convention. So, you could definitely, um, Skip the next few parts if you don't want to do LEDs, but if you do want to do LEDs, this is how I did it. So I'll be showing you in just a moment. Most of this will be um, time-lapsed, but I did show a few things like this here in real time just to kind of show just how it, you know, I think sometimes that can help you see things a little better. And I feel like gluing things together like here where I'm sticking them together. I feel like that's something I usually just fly through in a time lapse and you don't really see what I'm doing. So I decided on these ones, instead of making them completely like enclosed all around like I did for Ashamane, I wanted to add a zipper closure on the back to make these easier to get on and off. And I just used contact cement. I, I did two coats of contact cement so it'd be extra strong um, to attach my zipper and I'm using a separatable zipper. It's one of the plastic ones meant for like um, sports jackets I believe. And you see I just very carefully 
worked my way down the edge here to get it lined up. I also made sure I didn't get too close to the zipper teeth because I want that zipper to be able to move freely, which is what I was doing. Well, I didn't do right here, but I did do that at one point. I actually moved the zipper across to see if it was gonna catch a little bit or not. So, and now it's on there. And if I remember right, I decided I wanted the zippers to go the other way. No, I did that on off camera. Originally, I put the zipper going the opposite direction, which didn't make any sense. It made it harder to put on, so I flipped them around so the zipper ends up on the other side. Right? No. I don't know. Anyway, you want to play with what direction your zipper goes, because one way is going to make it easier than the other. I think this one is backwards. I think you zip it from the elbow to the wrist, but right here I have it from the wrist to the elbow, and that ended up being awkward. And this is the test fit. I end up deciding again that the little elbow bit over there is sticking out too far and I'm cutting it down. But overall I like this shape. I think it's a good shape for Deathwing's bracers. Slash gauntlet and here I am deciding what I'm going to cut off extra, which is basically the entire upper part. But hey, it's fine, it's fine. We can cut it off as we want. And here I'm just showing what I cut off and I'm going to use this to trace onto my pattern. So when I cut out my second gauntlet, bracer, whatever, um, it will match. And another test fit. You can never not do too many test fits. Um, I did move my arm around a lot because I wanted to make sure I could have as much range of motion as possible. Especially at this point because I'm going to be layering this up a lot and making them very bulky because of the LEDs plus it's a World of Warcraft armor set. It's got to be bulky, right? Um, but making it bulky will limit some movement later so I want to have as much as possible now. And now I'm cutting out my LED strips. I am using NeoPixels from Adafruit. Um, I don't show how I actually wire these and stuff because this is my first time doing that sort of stuff. And I don't want to show you guys stuff that's not like, it might not be perfectly right. So I am using Comedy Cosplay's LED books for this. So I suggest that you either check those out or check out her videos on doing LEDs to get information on that. I did cut a little hole up here at the top, which is where my wires are going to pop out. I decided I'm going to use servo cables to connect my different armor pieces, that way I don't have batteries hanging out on every piece of armor. So for these uh, gauntlets here, I'll have a short servo cable running from them up to my shoulder. It'll connect to my shoulder, and then that will all be on a battery. And yeah, so this is kind of the shape I decided to do with the LEDs on here. I could have used more LEDs, but I was trying to be a little more budget friendly because these are so expensive. So you could definitely use more LEDs than I did, but this is like the smallest amount you should use. And here I'm going to do a little test light to see if it works. And they all lit up so that works. Um, this was a animation. I was, was like a testing animation at first. I don't stick with this. But this is the shape I ended up with LEDs for one bracer. Um, I don't have any in the center because a big old gem of lights is going to go in there later. I'll show that in a bit. Um, but here I'm showing this animation because this was something I thought I was going to do, but then I ended up deciding I needed it to be flashier. You'll see later. And I just used contact cement to attach these to the bracer. I did use a silver sharpie to mark out where these LEDs would be sitting, that way I'd know where to put the contacts in it at. I do this with a lot of things from details and these LEDs and so on just to make it easier to know where you're putting this glue instead of just guessing and having it all over the place. It also helps me get things lined up again later. Okay, so the LEDs are glued down on this one. You don't have to look too close at this because I'm sure it's not great. I know it's not great. Um, and the server cable is going to be popping out the top here for me to connect onto another cable that will run up 
inside my gloves. Let's be hidden inside the gloves later. And I test it with the glowing spawn if it's cool. If you hear anything in the background, it would be that Howie and my parents is awake and jumping in her cage. She likes to run around in there sometimes. She's waiting for me to get her out. Okay, so I decided for the bracers, I was going to do these little riser things out of more 5mm film. Um, just to set the plastizote up higher, because if you press it exactly down against two, against the LEDs, you can still see like each circle of where the LED is. But if you raise it away from it, it um, doesn't show the dots so much, it kind of diffuses it more. Another option is to just do... A couple layers of plastic out like you can glue a nail flat but then do another layer to diffuse it more. I end up doing that for the breastplate later which will be the next video of the series um, but this was my idea for the bracers and it worked but I'll probably be going off the other method of just layering multiple layers of plastic out instead but here's one option so you can check that out. So here are the first uh, set of risers are on, I'm going to do a second set of risers, and then a layer of pastas out. And now I have the second set of risers ready to glue on. I'm using contact cement again. And basically I'm gonna do the same thing with these as I did with the first set, but they will be layered on top of the first set. So now that both set of risers on, it's time for the plastic soap. Um, so the glue doesn't soak through it like this. I accidentally put the glue on the wrong side of the plastic soap the first time and had to take it off and put glue on up the correct side and then glue it on. Um, I decided to make the plastic soap a little bit bigger than I thought I needed and then I just cut off the extra after I glued it down using an X-Acto knife like you're seeing here. And then later I'll just use a Dremel to sand those edges and make them nice and neat. So now I'm going to do a little test lighting with the bracers now that they have the plastic zone on there. And as you can see, you don't really see the individual dots of the LEDs as much. You do see some, but when it comes to armor, it's kind of hard to diffuse them that much. Unless you make your armor super thick. Um, but I think this is pretty good, especially since we're putting little tiny rocks all over. Once the rocks are on later, you'll see. Um, you can't tell there's any dots at all at that point. So now I'm moving on to the claws. They are quite similar to Ashman's claws, um, but modified a little bit. So with Ashman's claws, I did just two, meter, two millimeter EVA foam, high density. This time I'm gonna be using Thebra, which is a type of thermoplastic, and I'm gonna use the same mesh, mesh, mesh method, oh my, um, to make these like you do with Warbler and such. So I have two pieces for the finger claw part and two pieces for a knuckle part, which you can see here. I cut these with a beveled edge for the center part so when they glue them together they'll have a nice sharp point in the center, which is what I want. 
and then I'll layer thermoplastic on both the outside and inside of these, which I'm about to show you now. And yeah, it makes them a little more durable than the foam claws I made, Ashman's claws, now that they are probably eight months old, I guess, but they've been to several conventions at this point. They're starting to look a little rough on the underside, so I thought I'd go with something a little more durable, but I am very, like, aggressive with my cosplays. I'm a little rough on them, so this should uh, help with that. I did decide to go with uh, Thebra instead of Warbla. It has a very smooth finish. It took very minimal priming before painting. It's totally smooth, and it's also biodegradable, so that was a plus for me, and it doesn't quite cost as much as Warla does. I'll have a link to my materials in the description below, I'll have links to everything else we've been talking about. Um, and I'm working on top of a silicone mat, this is one meant for baking. You want to do that whenever you have thermoplastics because whenever you warm them up they get sticky and you don't want them to stick to your table or workspace. And I'm cutting out the bases for the back of the hand pieces here. Um, they're not going to get any LEDs, neither will the claws, it'll just be simple, regular style, I guess. Um, and I'm using triangle bevel dowels, foam ones, uh, just to help with time because this cosplay is taking so long to make. So instead of making my own bevels like I did for Hashimane, I bought pre-made ones. And I'm just using contact cement to glue them on. And back to the claws. So each hand had 10 pieces. But each piece, like the finger part and the knuckle part, uh, was composed of two pieces of foam each, and also two pieces of fibra each. That was a long, because this took forever. It took a long time. Um, but I liked the results, so I'd say it's worth it. I'm just doing another angle here. Hopefully you can see a little better than before how I'm doing this on here. Um, so when you heat it up, it gets kind of stretchy, it gets sticky, and you can just kind of work with it till you want it to do whatever you want. Um, it does, I will say Thebra picks up textures super well. Um, if I pressed my fingers into this too much when it was warm, it would actually pick up my fingerprints, and I, they were easy to smooth out, but that could be cool for some molds. So after heating it up here and there, I start to curve it so that I can close these back pieces together. And I just stick them together and use my little silicone brush thing there to help smooth out that seam. And then I can just use my fingers to help shape it to give it a little more round bit in there. Okay, now for these gems, um, I'm 
using an isolicone soap mold here, and I'm just filling up the mold about halfway of resin, maybe a little over half. I'm using unicorn, unicorn art resin as a two-part resin. Measure equal parts and mix it together. You mix them very slowly, of course, and I also have some resin tint in orange. Um, I will say I added about four drops of orange, I believe, and I wish I would have added closer to eight. Um, it wasn't quite as pigmented as I had wanted, but it still looked pretty good. And with this particular resin, I found that if you wait about two hours before you drop your LEDs in there, that seems to work best. That way they don't sink too much. And I let these sit for a full 24 hours before popping them out of the molds. And this is the risen color I used. I came in a pack of a bunch of different colors, but this orange ended up being just the perfect shade of what I wanted. And I got all of this risen stuff off Amazon. Um, and here you can see I have the LEDs in here. I will say if I went back, I would have only put one LED in this gym. These uh, Adafruit LEDs are so bright, I didn't realize that they were going to be that bright. Um, I thought one was going to be enough, but it definitely was. So, don't put four on there if you use those. They're extremely bright, and they are blinding. But I didn't want to redo them, especially since I didn't quite realize. I hadn't taken the chance to look at these in the dark until after I had already touched them to the gauntlets here and already added details over them and I didn't want to rip everything off at that point. Um, and this, as you can see, it's a little more transparent than I wanted. It's not quite as orange as I wanted. So I decided to use some yellow and orange paint to paint the backs of these before I touch them to the gauntlets. As you can see, it's super easy to peel these out of the silicone mold. I didn't even use any release for this. Um, and here I tested my ladies. I tested them before I put them in the resin and again later. Just because I wasn't sure if the paint would interfere with that or not, but it didn't. So, yeah. And I'm using my finger here because it, the brush over the risen was making a lot of brush strokes, but I didn't have any issues if I just used my finger. And I'm using those same dowels, but in a larger size, the um, triangle bevel dowels, foam ones, um, for the bevels of my gauntlets to, again, save time. These came from TNT Cosplay. The smaller ones were Yaya Hana. I'll have links below to these. And I believe these are the 14 millimeter, and I think the other ones that are on the hand are 10 millimeter, I believe. But this definitely saved a lot of time. And I'm using contact cement to put these on. Now it's starting to look like a gauntlet. Okay, so I'm using 2 millimeter high density EVA foam to put around the gym to give it a little like a uh, bit socket thing. Um, to get this curve shaped, I just ran it over, I had my heat gun right there and I was heating it up the foam as I kind of stretched it into a C shape. This will help it go onto that round surface better. And I'm also working on the little triangle diamond thingies that go on the back of the hands. I'm using two millimeter for that too. And I forgot to put my mask here. Always wear a mask when you're dribbling. I just forgot here. But uh, yeah, so I just cut these little diamond shapes, I dremeled a little trench in the back, that way they got a sharper little edge in the back. You could try to do this with a blade, but I'm really bad at it when it comes to thin foam like that. So I just use a dremel. And I use hung, or contact cement to attach these as well. Pretty much everything gets um, contact cement. Some things get super glue or hot glue though. And I'm just using, again, the contact cement to attach to that little trim there onto the gym, and then it's going to get these little like uh, prong things made out of 2mm EVA foam as well. And here I'm just cutting a circle for all those wires to go through for the gym, so I can run up to a battery later. I don't know why I didn't do that before, but for some reason I did it this way and it was bang. And just don't, just don't look at my wiring job. It worked. I didn't say that much, but it's not pretty. Here I'm finally attaching these little diamond pieces. I don't know what those are actually called. I just call them little diamond pieces. They're on the other part of the gauntlet. The big part is on the arm as well. There's like three of them over there, I think. Yeah. Oh, and here are the little prong thingies. Each gym gets five of these. 
and I'm just dremeling out where the prongs will go over the edge of the circle 2mm file and that way it just has a sharper edge to it. And now to aggressively shove it on there and hold it there for a little bit so it's on there. I had to hold it for a little while because on the long sides it was wanting to pull away a little bit. I think just because of all the layers of foam and stuff it was pushing it away. And here I've made my other little diamond pieces and I have some square pieces that will go on the sides as well. And I decided to stack up 5mm foam for this so they're 10 millimeter thick squares. The little diamond pieces are 2mm again. And once again, I am dribbling a little trench in there so they get that sharp edge. So these little block pieces here that I'm doubling up. So on the design, they have like these metal straps that go around the back side of the arm, like the inner arm. Um, but because I have a zipper running through the through the middle there, I divided it up. I think it looks okay the way I did it. Sometimes you have to adapt things a little bit whenever you go into different kind of touches like that. Adding the zipper is definitely going to get easier to put these on and off. And we have to stay better. My ashmore ones to make it light enough to slip over my hands as they were sliding down, and I had to add gloves that they could attach to, and um, this just cuts out some stuff. It'll make it easier. And context meant to attach these little triangle things, diamonds. And I am dremeling down the edges of my uh, bracers here. That way it kind of cuts down on that bulky look on the edges at least because I'm drilling inwards towards the inside and I just feel like it makes it look not so chunky. And after I glued my two pieces of foam together for the little bricks here, I am laying my drum on the edges to blend them in better and also the side of the box that touches the beveled edges, I'm making those angled so they sit on that a little bit better. I also heat formed them with a slight curve just so they fit around the arm a little better. And I forget to do this on video, but I use Chicago screws uh, later on to make my little reference on the box parts. Because my I end up using, I usually use googly eyes for this, but I didn't have a good size ones of those for this. And I had Chicago screws already that I got forever ago and never used. So I just used those. And here you can see I put googly eyes on the little fingers here. Um, I just used super glue to attach those. And I realized at this point after I restored priming them and painting them that I forgot about battle damage. So for, I used my silicone tools to make battle damage, but here I couldn't find them. I lost them after I cleaned my craft room because that's how it works, right? It's a mess and you know where everything's at and then you clean it and you don't know where anything's at. So I used to use this cardboard packaging for some twine to put lines into these. I ended up like an hour later finding my tools so the rest of them were easier to do but uh you just heat it up with the heat gun and push your little whatever edged thing you want to to get a line in there i just dropped my little mic thing so hopefully it'll make a weird sound but yeah just kind of press it in there and you can see it gets these little lines that so looks like it's kind of scratched up and stuff and then I'll add to that a little bit of weathering with the paint later, but I'm not doing that in this video. Painting is going to be in another video. Um, this time around, I'll be doing like the painting for all of the upper body in one video and all of the lower body in another video. But as far as building each type of thing, gauntlets have their own video, shoulders have their own video, breastplate has its own video, and so on. But the painting for all of this is all pretty similar, so I didn't want to make a painting video for every single piece of armor when a lot of it is pretty similar. So I think it works this way. Here I'm just showing some of the battle damage added to these. Um, and you get kind of a peek at how I started painting these. Um, but yeah, I'm just gonna show them 
shown that a little bit, of course, on the second set of claws later where I haven't pr had primed them already. Um, the malady went just a little better, but it didn't. Using the flex bond to prime and doing the heat, adding heat to do the spout damage after it didn't seem to affect the primer and it didn't seem to affect um, adding the bowel damage so much. So that's cool. So back to the main part. Um, I didn't make my foam rocks on video. All I did was just cut random geometric shapes and then dremel them smooth and then heat seal them so they're extra smooth, but you should heat seal all of your foam. And I am just using super glue to glue these on. I decided to glue them on while the lights were running. Um, that way I could help fill in any areas that didn't have any glueiness to them. I'd put the bigger rocks there and the smaller rocks um, around where it was nice and bright. So that would kind of show the light off a little better. Of course, if you used more LEDs than me, you wouldn't have this kind of problem, but like I said, I was trying to be budget friendly here, so. And I was kind of like putting together a puzzle, really, because I made all these rocks and the there was no pattern, I just cut them out randomly, um, kind of similar to how I thought they looked like in the reference photo, along with some other very various rocks, they were all different sizes and shapes, most, most of them cut up to a point, but not all of them. So, it was kind of like you know, work one, getting them all in there. Um, I'd set them down before I actually glued them on to look, and later I'd have to come in and make some extra rocks that would fill gaps better, because the rocks I already had did not fit. So, yeah, like a little puzzle, but the final effect ends up looking so awesome. I'm so happy with these so far, and I haven't even painted them yet. So now all the rocks are glued on, I'm adding more battle damage. Um, I did some of these while I was making the rocks, especially the eight areas that were looking a little funky. Then I went ahead and added some battle damage to hide that, um, but now that they're on there, I kind of made it a little more like I was thinking of something scratched here, then there'd be lines across these rocks. And by the way, right here, there are 73 of those rocks. 73. Between both gauntlets, I think I made 160 rocks. <laughs> and this entire cosplay is covered in rocks because it's going to take forever. I do think making the making all these rocks the final result was very much worth it. I mean just look how awesome this is. Oh and yeah, how I said the four LEDs in that gym was too much. Look at that. My arms will be flashlights. No one better lose me at this convention, because like you're trying to lose me if you can't find me. <laughs> I just oh I was so happy. At least the fire effect on the fast LEDs looked so cool with all the rocks. And here's a test fit. As you can see I started painting the gauntlet a little bit at this point. Um, you'll see that in a later video though, how I do that, but I was super happy with how this turned out. I can't wait to get these completely painted and to work on the rest of the cosplay. I think I already said I have started the breastplate at this point. It's to the point I'm adding details now, so that will be the next video. We'll be making the, or making the breastplate, so that'll be super cool. But oh my goodness, it's, it's definitely a very uh, crazy cosplay, but... It's taking so long to make, but I think it's going to be very worth it, and I'm already in love with it, and I only have the arms done, so mostly done. I gotta paint them. <laughs> then here's some screenshots to show them off a little better lighting. So as always, the material list of links is down below. I also have a link to my Instagram below, which is where I show um, little updates and whips behind the scenes stuff as I work on things. If you want to see almost daily updates or weekly, depending on how heavy my work is. Um, there will be that, and I'll have links to the to Zach who designed this and his art, so go check that out. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video in a couple of weeks, probably. I'm trying to do videos every two weeks, so we'll see how that goes.